It has been more than four years since I stopped teaching to focus on my personal retreat. Ever since the year 2020, we have entered a new era. During this special time, I feel that there is kind of an urgency for me to start teaching again for at least two to three years. I will focus on teaching the level three workshops in those areas that I already have instructors because I have significantly updated the level three materials during my retreat and also level one in those places that do not currently have uh, any certified Qigong instructors. Having said that, I will start by teaching the traditional Taoist Neigong first. That's because I have already trained over a thousand Qigong instructors worldwide since 2004. Even if you cannot locate a Qigong instructor close to you, there are many easy to follow Qigong courses on my website, which you can study at your own pace. Neigong is different. Even though I have taught Qigong to more than 10,000 students in person, I have only taught Neigong to less than 100. That's because I had set pretty high prerequisites for the students to enroll. They need to go through my level 1, 2 and 3 training workshops first, and then based on some other factors for me to decide whether to accept their applications or not. But still I find some of those who I accepted were actually just curious about Neigong. They were not really serious and didn't really practice after the workshop. That's why I'm making this video to satisfy those curious minds by explaining more about Neigong, like what are the requirements and commitments and what could you expect from this practice? Hopefully this will screen out those who are not ready to commit seriously to this practice. Another reason why I choose to start teaching Neigong first is Neigong has no physical movements, so I can easily teach it online. Right now the travel scenes in many airports around the world is still quite chaotic and who knows some countries may suddenly impose some travel restrictions again so it will save the students a lot of time money and headache for traveling to attend a one-day workshop another benefit for teaching Neigong online is I can spread out the one-day workshop into three weekly classes which allows the students much more time to practice and experience what they have learned so that they can progress gradually. It would also allow me to spend more time on the theories. Normally in my workshops, I don't spend much time talking about theories because that's something everyone can read by themselves. I'd rather spend more time practicing together with the students to give them hands-on experience when I'm there in person. Of course, nothing is perfect. Attending a Legong workshop in person with a teacher who has an authentic lineage is an experience which I believe cannot be replicated in the virtual world. Okay, so what is Nei Gong? Nei means internal, Gong means work or practice. Well, it sounds similar to Qigong, right? So what's their difference? First of all, in the past, there's no such term as Qigong. It is a relatively new term created in the 50s, which generalized all practices that involve Qi. And the main purpose of these practices is for improving health. The ultimate purpose for practicing Neigong Dao is to become immortal. Health improvement and longevity are simply the byproducts of practicing Neigong. Many of these byproducts have become the Qigong nowadays. 
By immortal, the Taoist means that spirits can live forever and free from samsara. Not that the physical bodies can live forever, like those vampires in the movies. I find many people misunderstood this part about immortality. Actually, if you read the Taoist classics, they often talk about qi ho sing sen, meaning give up the shell and grace as immortal. So, if you like most of my students who just want to improve their health and maybe even live a few years longer, then by practicing Qigong diligently and maintaining a healthy lifestyle should be enough to achieve these goals. Unless your health issues have a much deeper, deeper layer cause, like it is embedded in your DNA or your ancestor had this problem. And Qigong can still help to improve your symptoms and maintain balance. But in order to deal with the root of the problem, Neigong has a better chance. But it is not that easy. First of all, Qigong is much easier. Even by practicing just 20 to 30 minutes a day, you will see some benefits in the matters of weeks or even days. That's because most chronic and degenerative sicknesses are caused by blockages. In most Qigong, basically you are doing two major things. Accumulate Qi and move the Qi around your body. By simply doing these two things regularly, many blockages will be dissolved over time and your symptoms will gradually disappear. But Neigong is different. Every practice has a very specific goal to achieve. It could be to transform a specific type of energy into higher form, to unlock some specific gates, or to merge some meridians or dantans together, etc. These are all transformative changes. In our society nowadays, most people would need years of dedicated practice for these transformational changes to happen. Mm. Actually, it depends on many other factors. I would say some special ones may take just months to achieve these changes. While some may practice for their whole life, but still won't be able to achieve them. So you see, sometimes hard work and dedication is not enough in Nagon. That's why in the past, the Taoist masters are very picky in choosing their students to avoid wasting each other's time. Generally, if you are born strong and healthy, both physically and mentally, and start your practice at a very young age, you will have a much higher chance to have some achievements in Neigong. Actually, not just the Taoist Neigong. When I first learned the Tibetan Tantra, which I later modified this practice as Solar Qigong, that master almost didn't accept me because he said I was too old. I was only at my late 20s at that time and already had years of Qigong background. So why young and healthy has an advantage? For example, one of the first goals in Neigong is to transform the Jing into higher energy form. In order to create a golden dan or golden medicine, which is um, the purest form of positive energy that radiates golden color. A young and healthy person naturally has much more jing than an older or unhealthy person. Talking about jing, I see many books equate jing as sexual energy, 
which is not totally correct. Indeed, Jing is energy ready to be transformed into any body fluids like blood, saliva, bone marrow, hormones, sexual fluids, etc. Our Jing level naturally diminish as we age. So an older person will need many more times and effort to accumulate enough Jing in order for the transformation to happen. And even the student is able to create a golden dan, and older students may deplete the dan more quickly for healing this and that physical problems. So in this case, the student won't be able to use the golden dan to achieve the higher purpose in the Neigong practice. So how old is too old? Um, there is no clear-cut rules because there are so many different factors involved. For example, one of my teacher's students start learning Neigong at his mid-70s. At first, my teacher didn't really want to accept him, but because he owed him a favor, so he accepted him anyway. And to my teacher's surprise, this student was able to form the Golden Dawn in less than three years. Of course, this student is not an ordinary senior. He is a Ba Gua Zhang master. His lifelong Ba Gua Zhang practice has built him a good foundation and discipline. He really spent hours to practice the Neigong every day. I find this quite ironic that usually the students who have the highest potential for Neigong achievement don't have the time to practice. That's because usually they are younger, need to work full time to pay for their livings and or to support their families. They are also easier to be distracted by other things like their relationships. On the other hand, the less qualified students, those who are over 65, usually have lots of time to practice because they are retired and they also feel the urgency to practice. In Neigong, you really need long hours of continuous practice in order to achieve those transformational changes. Just like you want to transform a big pot of water into steam, you need to keep boiling it for a long time. If you turn the fire on for a few minutes and then turn it off for a few minutes, then on and off again. And no matter how many times you keep repeating these steps, the water will never turn into steam. In Neigong, the Chinese character for qi is written this way. It is different than the qigong's qi, which is like this. This character literally means air, so you get this qi from breathing. Maybe that's why some people say Qigong is a breathing practice. Inside this character is the word rice. So we can also get Qi from the food we eat. In Neigong, we are talking about transformative Qi. You see, this character is like a kettle with a fire at the bottom boiling. You keep boiling it until it transforms the water into steam. But first, you need to have enough water, which is Jing in this case. Otherwise, you are boiling an empty kettle, which is not good. Having said all of this, out of the hundred or so students that I have taught Neigong to, only one has progressed to the advanced level. Take a guess the age, marital status, 
and some other background of this student. Okay. Maybe to some of your surprise, she is at her 50s, so not young at all. But I believe she has been practicing yoga since she was a teenager. So that has helped her to build up a good foundation. Um, just a side note, even though you may have been practicing some other inner practice for a few decades, but that doesn't necessarily mean you have built up the proper foundation. Throughout my teaching career, I've met people who claimed they have been practicing or even teaching Tai Chi for a few decades. But I observe they cannot even relax their bodies. And many cannot even feel Qi. So every case is different. That student is um, self-employed so should have pretty flexible working environment and schedule which allow her more time to practice i think she lives in the countryside too which is also a plus point because where you live also makes a difference in your progress in our lineage we basically utilize the sky and earth Qi for our practice. We don't exchange or absorb Qi from any other living or non-living things. But for beginners, they would not be able to really absorb the Qi high above the clouds. They're usually just able to absorb the Qi uh, a few inches to a few feet above them which means they are just absorbing the qi from their environment. So if you work or live close to a hospital, hospital, funeral home, cemetery, a hectic city centre, then you are basically absorbing the qi from that environment, which is usually not that good. Also, if you live in a high-rise building, you will have a more difficult time to connect with the earth chi. So you see, that's why most authentic Taoist temples are located at those hard to reach mountain tops. Easier to reach those uh, pure sky chi. By the way, that student is married. Usually it is not a plus point, but it doesn't affect her, so it is fine. This leads to another common question, which is whether it is necessary to practice celibacy for Neigong. Again, this is not a simple yes and no answer. As I mentioned earlier, one of the goals in Neigong is to convert Jing into higher energy in order to create the Golden Dawn. Whenever we engage in sexual or strenuous activities, we consume Jing. Since everyone has limited amounts of Jing, so we will have less raw materials to use for creating the golden dawn. However, if you are born naturally to have plentiful of Jing, then use some of that for sexual activities is fine. Practicing celibacy simply by willpower is very difficult, which could even lead to psychological issues, which I have talked about in one of my newsletters. Actually, even just having a sexual thought, some of your gene will be converted into sexual energy and hormones already. In another word, you lost some Jing with just a sexual thought. There are so many stimulation from our societies nowadays. It is said an average person has 10 to 20 sexual thoughts per day. So you see how difficult it is, especially during the stage when your practice is to focus on accumulating Jing. Some people's sexual potency and libido may suddenly increase during this stage. And you may have the urge to release this 
excessive sexual energy. Um, it is usually a sign that you are successful in accumulating Jing, but not able to convert it into higher energy in a timely fashion. So some of them turned into sexual hormone and energy. The good news is once you are able to convert the Jing into a higher energy, you will, will naturally not have desire for any physical intimacy. So it may be bad news to some people. Psychologically, you may still miss it, but physically, you will clearly feel the drain a few days to a few weeks after sex. That's because you were already at a higher energy level after you successfully convert the gym. Once you drop back to your old self, it will not feel good. This may lead to another issue. When you are in a relationship, suddenly you don't want to have sex with your partner anymore. How would they feel? So ideally, both of you practice or you need, uh, you need to have a very understanding partner. Like I said at the beginning, Neigong is not for everyone. You may say, I don't mind. My goal is for spiritual liberation or my family have uh, some underlying diseases. I really want to use Neigong to completely heal them. Yes, if you are able to form the Golden Dawn and maintain a healthy lifestyle, then you should be free from any major sickness. But if you are already very sick, then your chance of forming the Golden Dawn is very slim. Also, the healing process is not fun. In the Buddhist and Taoist will, if you have an underlying sickness that is destined to happen, they call this physical karma. That means it is some debt you have to repay in this lifetime through physical suffering. After you form the Golden Dawn, it will purposely dig out those underlying sickness and then start to slowly heal them. That means you still have to suffer from these sicknesses. Just that instead of this sickness happened when you are weak, which could be evil, now they come out in a less severe form while you are still strong and able to slowly heal them. That's why some students may feel physically worse off after practicing Neigong. And since this healing process can last for years, I see some lost faith or couldn't endure the suffering and gave up their practice. So having a strong will is important to be successful in the Neigong journey. It is also a lonely journey. When I was teaching Whitney Qigong classes at the community centers many years ago, I find one of the major reasons that students come to the class is for social gathering. Doing Qigong together with a like-minded group has many benefits. You may even teach your friends and family because doing most Qigong like Subasu is really safe. However, Neigong is different. It is dangerous to teach others without your teacher's permission. It is also more of a personal journey. At the Neigong Foundation level, everyone learned the same things. So we could still have a peer group to share our experience. But once you passed this level. Everyone may learn something slightly different because everybody is different. 
And even if two students practice the same nagong, they may experience totally opposite phenomena. That's why the teachers generally discourage the students to share their experience among themselves after a certain stage. Um, think about it. When you hear a fellow student's wonderful experience, you may long for that. But that experience may be only be unique to that particular student. You may never experience that which could lead to disappointment. On the other hand, I find some students are very really good at imagining things or exaggerate their experiences. If you tell them after you practice so and so for a while, you will have this particular experience. After hearing this, they will tell you the next day, Oh Master, I have experienced that already. But that's just purely their imaginations. If you like to imagine things or have any psychological issues, including depression, then Neigong may not be that suitable for you. Well, um, actually at the foundation level that I'm going to teach, um, it is fine because we are just dealing with the physical body at this stage. The science of whether you passed a certain stage is also purely physical phenomena. So you won't be able to fake that by imagination. But at higher level, when our practice is beyond this physical body, then you really need to have a strong, healthy and stable mind. Otherwise, your own psychology may create many illusions, which could be dangerous. In all of our Nagong practices, even at the highest level, we don't imagine or visualize things. Also, if you have a um, serious high blood pressure, Nagong is not suitable for you because during the physical transformational stage, your blood pressure may stay higher than normal for some period of time. You should study the Tai Chi and Qigong for hypertension cause to stabilize your blood pressure first. So I hope I have um, successfully discouraged you to sign up for the Nagon workshop after learning all of this. But if you are still determined that Nagon is something for you, then you may continue to watch this video and I will tell you more about the actual practices that you will learn if you are accepted to this uh, online workshop. In our lineage, there are nine sets of practice. Oh, first of all, our lineage is called Zhong Yu Dan Dao. The founders are Zhong Li Chuan and Li Dong Bin. I'm sure some of you have heard of a book called The Secret of the Golden Flower, which is quite popular in the Western world. It is supposedly written by Li Dongbin. The Chinese name of this book is Tai Yi Jinhua Zhongzi, which actually has another meaning. Zhong Li Chuan is Li Dongbin's master, so Zhong Li Dan Dao is named after them. Dan means the inner medicine, Dao means the way. This lineage is actually a big umbrella. For example, the popular Dragon Gate set is also one of the branches of the Zhong Yu Dan Dao. Many inner practices can be credited to this lineage, just like the very popular internal Qigong practice nowadays, the microcosmic orbit. In this Qigong, basically you are circulating Qi through your front and back meridians. By clearing the blockages of these two major channels does help in improving the physical health. But it is far from transformational changes. 
The microcosmic of its practice is merely the first 20% of the first stage of our first set of Nagon practice. So people just took a bit from our lineage first Nagon and it became an independent Qigong. And there are five stages in the first set of our Nagon practice. So you see how much depth is in Nagon when compared to Qigong. So during the first stage of our first set of Nagon practice, we learn how to guide Qi precisely and to open all the major meridians. But it's actually much more than just opening the energy channels. In Qigong, when we say opening, we just make sure they are clear from major blockages. In Nagong, we open to a degree that some meridians will be able to merge together. And there will be very clear physical sign when you pass the first stage of this practice. Actually building this basic foundation is very important even if you just want to practice for spiritual and don't care about the body. Because at some point in your spiritual practice, when you are able to connect with a heavenly source, it is like you are under a waterfall with the water, um, which is spiritual blessing or energy pouring down into you. If most of your meridians are not opened, it is kind of like you are just carrying a small tiny cup to catch the water under a huge waterfall. What will happen? Most of the water will just splash out and you couldn't catch much in your tiny cup. By completing the first stage of our first Nagon practice, yourself will become like a huge bucket and be able to collect much more water under the waterfall. Even if you practice Kundalini, when this energy rises up, if the channels are too narrow or have some blockages, it may lead to Kundalini sickness. I find many people who teach Kundalini don't even know about this. Quite often, you see people do something like this involuntarily. They may feel good at the beginning, but actually it is a sickness that prevents them to progress further. In the Taoist Nagon practice, we will also unleash this Kundalini energy. But we only practice this after we build up the proper foundation to avoid any issue. Similarly, if you practice something that generates tumult, the inner fire, but you haven't learned how to guide the internal energy precisely and let it run while. It will create some problems too. In the Taoist practice, when this happens, we call it Zhao Huo. Literally means running away fire. Talking about fire, if you are able to ignite the sun wei Zhan Huo, which translates into something like the free wheel fires. It will help a lot in your spiritual progress. Um, just don't mix it up with the triple burner in the Chinese medical theory. Totally different things. These three real fires can burn away all your negativities, like all your physical sickness, any kind of desire or attachment negative emotions like greed, fear, regret, etc. When you are able to get rid of all of this, you will be pretty much always be in a peaceful state and have a stable and balanced mind. Then you could obtain Samadhi much easier. The second and third practices from our lineage is about forming the golden dawn. 
which you will learn from this Lego online workshop, along with the different stages of the downtime transformation. When you are able to create the golden dawn, you should be free from any major sicknesses because this golden medicine will keep nourishing all your internal organs. But like I said earlier, it is not that easy to form the golden dawn. And the healing process could be quite painful. So be prepared. If your goal is to keep yourself healthy, then once you created the golden dawn, you don't really need to practice anymore until you deplete it. And if you still have access after healing your underlying sickness, then you could use this golden dawn for some higher purpose in the more advanced Nagong practice. So in summary, Nagong is a dual practice that cultivates both the physical body as well as the spirit. The practice ultimate goal is for spiritual liberation, which you will be able to leave your physical body at will and become immortal. However, you need to get rid of all the negative energy in your physical body first before you can achieve that. That's why the Legong practice at the beginning stage focus on cultivating the physical body first in order to build up the proper foundation. The Bible says our bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit. Many other religions and spiritual teachers say something similar. Just imagine the roof, windows, door, or even the walls of your house are broken. Different animals, insects, cold wind, and snow can come in easily. And if the house is dirty, full of garbage, you will attract rodents and cockroaches. You will be busy fixing and cleaning this and that, and would be difficult to find peace or the time to focus on more meaningful things under this situation. Of course, when you reach the advanced level, it doesn't matter anymore. You could even live in the caves. But for beginners, they are easily distracted. Just like when I host some retreats before, sometimes the student complained the noise of the refrigerator is too loud. After I unplug it, then they complained about the ticking sound of the clock. So for beginners, it is necessary to have a clean and proper temple or shelter so that they can focus more on the spiritual part. The legong that I'm going to teach in this workshop focus on building this clean and proper shelter. This cleaning and building process could be very long though. But then you may ask, didn't some Taoist classics say it just take a hundred days to build up a proper foundation? First of all, the definition of proper foundation is different between each lineage. Secondly, that hundred days is for those special children or teenagers who were chosen by the masters. In the past, they lived in the temples without internet and smartphones, no need to worry about making a living or study, so they can pretty much practice days and nights. For us, we we'll start at a much older age and need to make ends meet. 100 days is definitely not enough to build up the foundation. It is more likely to take a few hundred weeks and provided that you practice for at least two hours daily. If you cannot even afford two hours of daily practice, 
and don't bother signing up for this workshop. Qigong is a better option for you. And if you are already very weak or sick or over the age of 70, um, you may still sign up. Just you should understand that your chance of forming the golden dawn or even just passing the first stage of the first practice is very small. Again, Qigong should be a better option for you. There is no portion requirement for the foundation level Qigong. Generally, we practice them sitting on a chair, not even need to cross the legs. Most people can sit steadily on a chair and watch a one and a half hour long movie, right? You may also do those practice standing or even lying down on your bed for the first set of Neigong. So for the postural part, everyone should be able to meet the prerequisites, which is to stay steady for an hour. However, you must be able to feel the internal qi movement, not just the qi between your palms, but the qi flowing within your body. Otherwise, you may be just sitting for an hour imagining things, which is not good. So what are the other prerequisites for signing up this online workshop? There are a few techniques and practices in the level 2 and 3 Qigong mode courses that you must have practiced them for at least three months period to the start date of this online workshop, which is February 4, 2023. After your application is accepted, I will tell you specifically which practices from these courses you need to focus on practicing during these few months. Since the level 2 and 3 practices are based on the level 1 Qigong mode course. So if you have not even started the level 1 course, then I do not encourage you to sign up for this February workshop. Take your time, progress gradually from level 1. I will offer this Neigong workshop again in the second half of next year. For those who meet the prerequisites and determined to sign up, you can follow this link to submit your application. And if you have further questions about Neigong and this workshop, you are welcome to drop me a message. Thank you for watching this long and boring video.